Brooke Hines, we are back. We are back. We were here a while back, and at that time, there was a lot of concern here at Carter Caves and all around the state, anywhere there are caves and bats, yep. about white nose. Now, it's been a while since we've talked. Yep. Update us. Now, we've talked on the call-in shows and things have, like that. We yes. But first of all, tell us where we stand today and where we're at, so on and so forth. All right. Well, um, in 2011, we is when uh, the state first found white nose syndrome out in Trigg County. Since then, we have, uh, it's just swept across the state and uh, we're up to 65 sites in over uh, about 20 counties and uh, at this year in 2014 we've, we're, we're finalizing our hibernacula counts we have started to see uh, pretty significant mortality in a lot mm. of those sites um, and numbers are starting to decline so it's, it's hit us really hard. For those who have not heard of this Let's let's break it down. Okay. Bats come together to hibernate. Exactly. In caves, different yep. places. Yep. In the past couple of years, this white nose syndrome has been introduced, and basically, it's a fungus. It is fungus. And yep. what? How, how does it physically affect the bat? So it's a cold-loving fungus, and what it does is it uh, gets onto the bats, and it's in its spore. Um, life stage attaches to the bats and when they go into torpor um, they lower their body temperature they suppress their immune system and that's when this allows this fungus to grow it's a cold loving fungus so it loves caves mm. it's a cold wet environment perfect for this fungus it grows on them and the, the growth is called the hyphae state and the hyphae will grow and it'll also invade the dermal layer and it's akin to athlete's foot it's really really uh, uh, irritating to them and it will cause them to arouse from torpor more than they uh, basically can withstand. So on average a, a typical bat species will maybe arouse every couple weeks. Well these bats that have this fungus will arouse every three days. Hmm. And uh, so they burn through their fat reserves more quickly. Um, it causes them to come out of hibernation early into a climate like this where there's no food um, and they die of either dehydration, starvation or exposure. And so we're losing a lot of bats um, that way. And uh, some of them aren't even making it out of, out of torpor. They're, they're dying while they're hanging. This winter's not been forgiving. These super cold temperatures are not helping. We haven't had that warm snap that we're typically used to in January where we get some moths out and some insects hatching and, and for the bats to be able to feed. So here we are at Carter Caves, State okay. Resort Park. Tell us what we're going to do today in this particular cave. We are going to go into Laurel Cave here at Carter Cave State Park. It's one of the three uh, known uh, caves on the park that have uh, Indiana bats in them. And we're going to do what we call a tier one uh, count, which is a full count of all the bats that we can find in that cave. Uh, we count every species um, and we also will look for white nose, although this site is confirmed. We'll look for signs of white nose because we are documenting um, percent infection by species. So, and it's, it's, it's visible you know we know the bats are probably all have the spores on them but we look for that visible state of growth where we see the white around the mm -hmm. muzzle and on the forearms and sometimes on the ears uh, any non furred areas where you're going to see the fungus um, and so we try to document that um, just for da data reasons and also for it could also uh, help with recovery of the species to know percent infected from year to year how this how this disease progresses I guess it's off to the back cave off to the back cave we'll follow you all right Now, how does this change tours throughout the summer, or does it? Yeah, it's changed stuff for us a little bit, but we've been adapting to it. Uh, we have never stopped doing walking tours of our X Cave and Cascade Cave, which have been open year-round in the past. Uh, the, the Bat Cave and also uh, Salt Peter Cave are two caves that are Indiana bat hibernaculas. We usually just tour during the summer, Memorial Day right. through Labor Day, when the bats aren't hibernating. Uh, after White Nose, 
Uh, the threat of it was getting closer. In 2009, we canceled the crawlathon. We didn't reopen Bat Cave or Saltpeter Cave that summer. Uh, so we, sh we shut down those tours. We ch changed directions a little bit. Uh, we focused, we, we started doing more canoeing trips. We do some extended hiking tours. Um, we're doing more craft type programs with kids during the summertime. Uh, we started doing ghost tours of, of the caves. Uh, it's kind of an evening walk with lanterns through Saltpeter uh, and X Cave with uh, some stories, ghost stories based around caves. I'd say we got between 60 and 80 that I can see, but there could be up to 100, 150 in there, packed in there the way they're packed in there. This is probably a pretty typical day at the office yep. for you. Yep, yep. Um, you came in here, you saw... Conquered. Oh, conquered, what do you think? What, what are your... It seems like it's pretty it's pretty typical of a like kind of a first year infected, you know, from year one to year two infected site. And um, you know, I like that we're not seeing a lot of uh, dead bats. It looks like our numbers as far as the Indiana bats go are are maintaining or, or slightly higher. Our little browns numbers um, seem to be down a little bit. Overall, it, it looks it looks okay right now. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like seeing the bats on the outside of the gate mm -hmm. in the twilight area. Um, I, and those were the most infected. Um, and as you're looking at bats back here, you're seeing less visible signs of it. So that seems to be the case, the ones that become more infected and are, ha are struggling or trying to get to the cooler areas to, to maintain torpor. But there's hope. Uh, there are several treatments that are being tested right now um, to help slow the spread um, of the fungus uh, that kill the fungus but aren't harmful to the bats. It's just when to apply them and how to apply them that we're still trying to figure out. So if we can maintain these populations and start utilizing some of those treatments, we may start to be able to reverse some of this.